September. So you can check our web page to see where we are and what we're doing. Okay. What's your website? <laughs> okay, you can go to www.rulewashington.org or you can also find us on Facebook. You can either find her, Rural Washington, or you can go on the company, Rural Washington Dance Fair. Click like, so you have various updates about our performances and school programs, or she has a Twitter account. <laughs> 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 I never use it. <laughs> yeah. What is it about? Well, what is what about? What's he? You gotta figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now, which dance? You have to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the mask? Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So, when you go back home, or when you go to school, when you get to the library, when you look up Paul Lawrence Dunbar, that is the author of the poem, We Wear the Mask. And that poem deals with is, is expressing the idea that people put on a fake a fake face, a fake personality in order to be accepted, in order to be liked, in order to get the job, in order to have friends. In order to get through. In order to get through, get through life. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to put on a brave face to make it through the day. You know. So what Lula was saying is we wore past him. We used to wear the mask. We don't have to wear the mask anymore. And so the piece is talking about, look, we're here, and we're still here, and we're still moving on, and we should be accept accepted for who we are, as opposed to having to wear a mask to be accepted. And that can relate to you, because I'm sure some days you have to do stuff that you really don't want to do, <laughs> but you have to act like you want to do it. <laughs> So it's the same thing, but it's not just a, uh, a uh, the math is not just in the African American community, the math is in all cultures. Every culture has a math that they wear. Um, yes? Uh, can you give me the story behind the dance thing? Rain. 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 So that piece was dealing with several different instances of love. And for the soloist who does that, that part, this, this time I was just doing it, um, you can bring what you kind of want to the story. And for me, it was a loss of my entire family, my husband, my children, I had nothing left anymore. And all around me, people are in love and happy and wanting to help me, but I'm, I'm still in the place where I can't. Accepted. That was my interpretation this time. Also, uh, with with the choreographer, it has to do with everyone's personal issues in your personal life, with how you choose to deal with your loved one or your loved relationships with your family, with your significant other or whomever that you have relationships with, and ultimately that one thing that happened that you wish never did happen, or ultimately. Uh, you are just in such pain and agony that you feel like you personally cannot go on, but you, you still find the, the strength and, and the comfort in the other one. But in her situation, as in many situations, many people don't still still find it. But you have to search for a, a higher a higher being uh, to find that that self love. <laughs> Depending on our season, we um, work from Monday to Friday. Depending on our reps, we sometimes come in from 11 to 5, or we might do 1 to 5, or depending on the type of work again, we either do like from 11 to 8 sometimes. So we're working very hard. And it also has to do with economics. Uh, we used to do five days a week, and now we have to cut back to four. And we used to do uh, 11 to, well, we still would do 11 if we have, if we're in a real crunch and we have to bring new people in or something, or if it's a brand or a new piece that we need to continue to tweak it. Uh, ideally, uh, ideally uh, the company needs to work 
uh, five days a week, eight hours a day, ideally. That's, that's where competition uh, out of the East Coast companies, that's what in the Classical Valley companies, that's what they have to do. And you actually need all of that time. But uh, because, again, economics of, of the arts, sometimes it doesn't, uh, you're not able to do that. So you do what you can in the amount of time that you have. Uh, yeah. Is this the full company, or are there more of you in full company? Well, the company fluctuates. It depends on the work that we're doing, right. and again, the economics. Uh, when we tour, we I think we have two or three other people that we try to take because sometimes they're injuries, and everybody in our company has to they have to learn all the parts. All so right. that uh, yeah, uh, last tour I think Lynette's back went out, and so uh, uh, we had to have someone else that so dancers get hurt. And when you're on tour, if you have a real small group and you don't have anybody to cover those parts, you can't tell the presenter well we can't do the show. Uh, but, so we try to have enough dancers to uh, to cover all the parts, uh, and then as you can see, they have to have a lot of stamina. Very Very Yes, and then I'll switch to that. Which is more difficult, to dance with shoes or barefoot? I see you dancing barefoot. I've never seen anyone dance barefoot. <laughs> It really depends on the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, because we rehearse barefoot, so for a majority, like 90% of the time, we don't have any shoes on. So we're prepared to work that way. So when we have to put on shoes, like those shaft sneakers, like we saw in rain, uh, it's a different <laughs> challenge, different weight, uh, different traction. Um, we train in ballet, so we wear those shoes, but we never get to use those on stage. So it, it really does depend on the shoe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, one person over here and then one person back there. Yes. Yeah. Within your group, uh, you were looking at the boys and, and what the cuisine and what you're trying to express. Not just for the dance, um, the choreography that you're working on and the music that you're currently using. Is there anything that you do that just draws inspiration and that inspires you to make a certain type of dance? Could you repeat the question? So I, think, I think what you're asking is um, wh how how do we draw from from working together? Well, we take class together. Um, we, regardless of whether or not people go and take other classes, it's really crucial that we take class together. So we are breathing and sweating and working together. We um, we check each other in the most um, positive <laughs> of constructive criticism. <laughs> we support each other in that way. Um, and we pray together. Um, and we eat together. And we take care of each other. And we share rooms together. So we do a lot. And we, and we pass on information about the different pieces. Uh, for example, if someone was with the, with the choreographer on the day that they were learned to very first teaching the choreography, if someone new comes in, then it's pretty much up to those that those people who are there to pass on the actual verbiage. Yeah, the information for the victim. Do you want to add? Yeah. Um, also, I think one thing that we work on as a collective is fortifying the work. Lula Washington's work is not just choreography for choreography's sake. It's always based on a story and um, most of the time particular to the African American experience. And so to bring in different works, um, when we were abroad, when we were in China, we went to museums almost daily, um, heavily socializing with the people and getting to know different customs. Um, we're also reading on our own. And then each one of us brings a little bit of a different background, and so we do a lot of talking. I know uh, Tanika was working on a new work this past winter, and we sat around and talked and just learned from each other's experiences, because we have a lot of experiences within ourselves, but we're also constantly learning, growing, educating ourselves, and doing research that pertains to this work, so that when we do it, it's just not that we have an actual story and something to contribute. Dr. Joe, if someone back here, and then I'll get to you. Yes. Well, I just want to call and you guys you know, all my love and for a lot of the performances. And I just have a question. Why have my group Yeah, yeah, good question. Well, no, we want to hear the next. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, the places that we perform, uh, maybe it's not always possible. And like, Presenters are responsible for doing 
marketing in the various different areas that they're in. And a lot of our work, honestly, we haven't been out in this uh, part of uh, California in a long time. Uh, and again, it's because of economics in terms of how often a presenter can bring you. Even if their audiences love you, they may not be able to bring you, but maybe once every three or four years because of all the work that they have to put into making it happen. Uh, I think there's someone right here you want to say? I was just wanted to add. And then uh, also, we, we have been very blessed to be able to work a whole lot outside of California. Um, and so that's, that, you know, it, it also goes back to an economic thing in terms of our own in-house marketing machine. Uh, so now that you've seen us and now that you've hopefully fallen in love with us, <laughs> go on our website and say something about the performance, about the experience, and um, make, tweet it, do whatever you have to do, and, 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 and make, a, make a contribution maybe to the school to be able to bring back the company Ooh. next time. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. In addition to your dancing, what do you do like the physical center? Do you have to go to the gym? Uh, a lot of the dancers do go to the gym. They cross train. Michael lives a long way from the studio, but he rides his bike to the studio every day. Sometimes he walks. Uh, Quayla and some of the dancers go to the gym and work. Um, you, you need to do that to keep your body strong, uh, especially when you do this, this kind of work. Uh, and then our classes are pretty uh, uh, physical, I think. The classes are also <laughs> physical. <laughs> so, you know, there's some companies that dance and they, the dancers never sweat, so they can, you know, take tops and hang it up and wear it again tomorrow. But you can't do that. You know, these dancers are dripping wet when they finish. It, it used to be a joke that they could, you know, instead of going on a diet, they could they could do all the choreography and yeah, burn the butt. So, yeah, so it's very physical, and they do do other things. Otherwise, there would be many more injuries. Yes. Yeah. How long do people stay in the, in the dance company for? Uh, I think people stay in the dance company different uh, lengths of time. I think Bernard has been here the longest. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 you don't count. <laughs> yeah, you can. And Micah's been here quite a time. Um, what are the longest? Tamika, Bernard, Micah. Well, you have uh, Bernard around the same time, Micah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah different people, different uh, lengths of time. We, we, we have, um, Lula has from the beginning. Pass the mic down. Yeah, so everybody can say how long they've been with the company. Okay, yeah, but I, I'll, and I'll say this really quickly. Lula likes to train her dancers from, from home. So we have a school, and that's one thing that really sets us apart from most dance companies, is that we actually have a school where we train people with the intention of one day they're going to perform with our company. And so we also have a youth, a children's company and a young youth teen adult uh, company. And um, when we get new people, brand new people in, I would say the average is somewhere between three and, and five, sometimes sometimes ten years. Um, but mostly everyone here has had a, a time with us. I'm actually quite new. I, I, I've been a teen for eight months. A year and a half. Fifteen years. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 this is our, our composer of the music, Mr. Marcus Miller. <laughs>
They have to show that they're committed. They have to be able to uh, dance next to these people and look just as good as they look. Um, so, and then sometimes we're able to spend more time with these people, and then sometimes we're not. Again, it's a it's an economical uh, thing. And then uh, dance dance here is it's really kind of difficult for for dancers here uh, in Los Angeles, but it's not impossible. It's a little difficult, but it's not impossible. Yes. What's the evolution of getting an idea from your head onto the stage of the dance? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here, she wants to answer for you. I would say it's definitely a process. Um, when we was creating new work, you have it's kind of like cut and paste. Like we want a whole phrase, and then we say, okay, I don't like that. We'll take it out. It's kind of like a bird. Like it's still a few shows that you ready. Like, you know, this piece of work has evolved so many times, but it's just like a work in progress. It's so to speak. It's like even bird. You know. It's
had this story, this abstract story that came from her, her brain that we get to interpret as artists and we get to see as an audience and we get to share in this conversation unlike anything else that I've ever experienced in my life. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, a little more if you can back on that, then I'll call for you right here. Uh, first, it's like I'm working at playing around with the idea. Uh, at first, it was going to be called uh, Black and Latin America, Latin America and African American. Now we have to play around the idea of intersection, how, how we intersect, how the African American culture and community intersects with the Latin American culture and history. So just here when we came, uh, on this very stage, we started playing around with, with the rhythm, this thing, uh, to explore how uh, the folklorical footwork connects to tap, and how tap and African connect to folklorica. So we started playing around with just some like movement ideas uh, already. So we're going to be working with uh, Monty. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we're going to be uh, working with them. They're going to come down. We're going to come back. And so they're going to be uh, helping us because there's, uh, in, in our research, we discovered that there in uh, uh, Latin America, there was a Yeda. And uh, he was a slave that was in Latin America, but he helped to fight for the freedom of the slaves there. And so I did, I never learned any of this in history, in any of my history class, I never learned any of it. And so I was able to come here and share my ideas and get more information from uh, students and, and people here when we came down. So we're looking at playing around with that. And then, uh, I think Yinka has a town named after him. And in, in Veracruz, Mexico, so there's a town named after Yinka, and a uh, big statue of him. And there's movement associated with that township. So we're going to play around and explore with that. And now, you. What's your time frame from the point of conception to the point of performance? How long does it take to well, the math didn't take very long because I, I had already, once I get an idea and I was playing around in my head and I know that I have to do this dance at, such, at a particular event or something, I, work, I can work really fast. Um, if it's something that I'm really not motivated to do, you know, I'll drag it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have to be motivated to do it. You have to have the inspiration. So you have to yeah. do a little bit and let it sit, you know, there it is, whatever. <laughs> And all the components, like if I'm trying to get a live musical score, like written by Marcus or something, I have to share my ideas and stuff with him, so he can get his part of the process into it. Um, and then I also have a, a creative, a lot of creative people around me, and when I'm tossing out ideas and things and telling them to try it. And then so it, 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 it just each piece is, is really different. It could be a week, or it could be six months, or it could be a year, or it could be two days. It depends on how quickly things are flowing out of you. And I think there was somebody back here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so the community icon, what is the thing that you want to use to take from, from the show and from your classes to extend to the outside world from your group? Well, I think for the, the young people that see the show, I'm hoping that they that they are motivated and interested in continuing to tell their parents to bring them out to see art, whether it's dance, whether it's dance, or music, or theater. Our kids and our young people are, need to get out and see and be exposed because all, many of them only see stuff on television or on internet or they just play computer games and they don't go out. And so our kids need to be exposed to the arts. Uh, they need to see the symphony. They need to see, you know, they need to see different cultural, different cultural festivals and things. They need to get out. So I'm hoping that they'd be motivated to see dance. For other people, I'm hoping that we've generated in them a spirit of wanting to go and experience dance. Uh, 
uh, as you are here tonight. That'll be a man with a And the pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that's the bottom line. It, it has to be paid for. And the seats need to be full. You know, if I said this not going to go to get their neighbors to come. But, you know, a lot of times we're dead. People don't understand what it is, and so they're very hesitant. And a lot of times with modern dance, and particularly, people feel like, well, I didn't get it. Something must be wrong with me. <laughs> no, nothing's wrong with you. You know, you get what you can get from it. And maybe you didn't get nothing today, but, you know, you might be dropping your car like two weeks from there and go, oh, I got it. <laughs> yeah, that was what it was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what type of classes do you offer for children and adults, and can we find people come and take classes at your place? <laughs> certainly. You certainly can get on the freeway and come down to L.A. <laughs> we offer all the dance styles, ballet, jazz, tap, African modern, hip hop, Caribbean, gymnastics. Hot Keto, <laughs> Line Dance, Zumba. Zumba. Well, not Zumba right now. We're going to do it again. Yeah, it'll be that. But we offer a whole range of classes all day on Saturday. There are classes from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5, 6 in the evening. Uh, all day. Yeah, all day. Yeah. And we have a summer intensive dance program. We have a summer program all day for young people to participate in the arts. And uh, I think there's somebody over here. I think you need to wrap up. Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your beautiful performance with us. You're welcome. I remember I worked here at Oxford College just such a pleasure to show some of our love. You guys have been fantastic music for many interesting things to come. Thank you. 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 Thank don't forget to check us out, Facebook, Twitter, call us up, YouTube, Actually, YouTube right or something. If you go to our website, if you go to our Facebook and our Twitter, we really could use the support of your words. So that's important. But that's the thing. For people, sometimes people really like something, but they don't never write it down. But the people that hate something, well, they can write it down. <laughs>